Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining with us for our midweek Bible study. We appreciate it so very, very much. Hope you're doing well today, and we're praying for you, as always. Pray for us, as you, I know you do, and we appreciate it very much. Pray for our nation. Uh, big week and the election going on and everything, so let's really pray that God's will is done, and pray for our leaders always. Those in authority over us, God tells us in his word to pray for them. We should always do that. Pray for our church family, those who... Uh, maybe sick or afflicted, recovering from surgery or whatever may be going on in all of our lives or any of our lives, uh, let's continue to pray uh, that God's will would be done and healing would be administered unto us. Today we're going to pick up uh, with our study of uh, 1 John. We looked at uh, chapter uh, 1 and the first two verses of chapter 2 last week. Uh, we'll be in chapter 2 today. We'll review those couple first verses and maybe even some of those in the last part of chapter 1. But it is good to have you with us today. This chapter is full of uh, spiritual truth, uh, spiritual wisdom, uh, knowledge for the believer. Uh, really, we will not do it justice by trying to cover it all in one session, but we will do that at this time been thinking about doing a real in-depth study of uh, John's epistles, uh, but we will uh, do this kind of survey now and then maybe later, uh, maybe even put some sermons together for Sunday uh, on uh, 1 uh, John, 2 John, and 3 John. But today we'll be looking at 1 John chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles open there, let's go ahead and begin with uh, the verses there. The Bible says... My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. What things is John talking about there? Well, the things he talked about in chapter 1. Uh, of course, uh, having fellowship with the Father. How do we do that? Well, we walk in the light uh, of God. And that walking in light means that our sins are revealed. They're open to God. And we confess those sins. That's how we walk in light. And of course, walking in light has another meaning, and that's to walk in the ways and truths of God's Word. We walk in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, His ways. And we know His ways by reading the Bible, studying just as we are right now, and therefore living a life pleasing to Him, but also a life of uh, walking in the light that allows God to... Uh, a look inside our bodies, which he does anyway, but we freely confess sin. And that way uh, we can have a sweet fellowship with God at all times. So, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, I love this verse, one of my favorite verses in all of Scripture, uh, we have an advocate or one who continually pleads our case with the Father, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. It is his righteousness that God sees that has been placed upon us through faith in Christ. And Jesus continually pleads that case for us. And he is the propitiation or payment uh, or sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only not for the believer only, uh, but he's also offered that to the whole world who can, by faith, experience forgiveness of their sins. Uh, so we see that very, very clearly today. In verse 3, And hereby we do not know uh, that we know him if we... I'm sorry, let's back up. I made that a total blunder. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Let me ask you a question. Uh, we know that we know him by keeping his commandments, just as John has said here, but I think the question arises most here is the desire of our own individual heart, the heart that God sees. Do we desire to keep his commandments? A question that takes that thought a bit further. Does it bother you when you know that you've sinned? I think that that is one of the number one ways of knowing uh, that we are a child of God when our lives do not line up with how he expects us to live, which is sin, it's disobedience to the things of God. 
And we are convicted by that. Uh, that's not a pleasant thing, is it? We want to make that right. And God sees that desire in our hearts, does he not? And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. We desire to live a life pleasing to God. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, or the desire to keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his words, in him verily is the love of God perfected or made mature. It's a growing process. Is the love of God perfected? Hereby know we that we are in him. We can know we're saved because of how we feel in our hearts, of the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit who resides in us, convicting us and guiding us and showing us the things that are right and wrong in our lives. If we have that desire to please God, then we can know with assurance that we are one of his children. Uh, people will say, and I've seen it, you've all seen it, I'm sure. Well, I know the Lord and this, that, and the other, and they live like the devil, and it doesn't seem like it bothers them at all. Now, none of us know the heart of a person, but their fruits, of course, tell us that they may not know the Lord. Now, we can't be the judge, but, uh, but it says a lot, doesn't it? Certainly it does. Uh, if, if we see a person who is, has fell into sin and they're truly sorry for it, I always go back to the, to the uh, Pharisee and the publican there in the temple. The Pharisee is boasting about how he's done this and tithed on all of this and all of that, but the publican comes in. He won't even look up. He won't, he's back in the back of the building, and he won't even look but lift his head up as much to look unto the Lord. He just pounds on his chest and he says, God have mercy on me, a sinner. My friend, that is the attitude that God wants all of us to have. Have mercy on me. I am a sinner. I come short of the glory of God. And if it bothers us when there is sin in our life, we can be assured, that blessed assurance, that we are one of God's children. It's, not, it's more than a thing of conscience. You know, it's unsafe people have consciences and do right things, but, but if, we, if we are out of line with the things of God, the things of the Lord Jesus, and we desire to be in line with him, uh, that's, the, that's the key, is it not? Again, verse 4, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his words, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him, all, him also, all, all, himself also, so to walk even as he walked, as Jesus walked. Who is our example? The Lord Jesus Christ. Did he sin? No, he did not. He was perfect in every way. The only person that ever walked this planet that held to God's standards 100%. There's never been another person. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he is our example that we are to strive to reach. Our goal as Christians is to, is to try to live as close to the life of Christ as we can. Number seven, verse number seven. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Well, what's John talking about there? Where is the word that he is talking about? Well, I'm going to show you that very quickly. In Deuteronomy chapter six, verse five, this is what he's referring to. He says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. That is the, the, the uh, reminder of what, how we're supposed to live. And my friend, if we love God that way, don't you think we're going to do our best to keep his commandments? Yes, we are. Certainly, we are. And it goes on and it says in verse 8, again, a new commandment uh, I write unto you. And you think, well, that's a bit contradictory which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Okay, I'm going to give you a real quick example of that. Back in the Old Testament, it was an eye for an eye, remember? 
But now that Jesus has come on the scene and John is proclaiming what Jesus taught him and the other disciples, the other followers there, he, Jesus said there, if you recall, remember what it said, an eye for an eye, but I'll tell you to turn the other cheek. If a man hits you once on one cheek, I'm telling you to turn the other cheek. That's the new way. That's the new love that has entered in by grace uh, through God's mercy and power through Christ, uh, that is the new commandment. And that new commandment, of course, uh, is not a new commandment as far as, uh, as it being a law way back there, but, but it's a thing of the heart now, that we love our neighbor as we love ourselves because we desire to. And that's the thing. It's not that we're being made to, but that we desire to because the love of Christ, as it said there uh, in verse 6, walk uh, uh, even as he walked, talking about the Lord, he was taken to be crucified and opened not his mouth. He loved, did he not? And that's the new thing that John is talking about here. It's not the old law. It's the new thing that Christ, through his love and kindness, the Prince of Peace, has brought into the world, you see. And this is what John is proclaiming. Uh, let me ask you a question. The old, the old law said that you were to love your neighbor as you love yourself and do this, and it had all kinds of things there in Levit Leviticus. If you stole, you had to do this much back to, to make reconciliation with your neighbor and all of that. That was the law. Let me ask you this question. It's a good example, I think. Now, if your little kid comes to you or your little grandchild, as in our case these days, comes to you and says, I would like to have a bowl of cereal. I need something to eat. I haven't eaten this morning. Now, I want to ask you, are you going to get up and, and, and fix that kid his uh, breakfast or clothe him or whatever uh, because you're afraid that the sheriff might come and lock you up for child neglect? Or are you going to get up and dress that kid or make him that bowl of cereal that he's asked for because you love him? My friend, you're going to do it if you're, if, if you're right because you love him and you want the best for him, right? Well, that's exactly what's changed here. Now, the old part of that that John has, has told us there that, that in Deuteronomy 6, 5 that we're to love, the, love God with all of our heart and soul and might, certainly that applied in the New Testament as Jesus quoted that very thing, but, but then he went on to say to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And my friend, that's not a law anymore, but Jesus is trying to proclaim the love of Christ that should live in us. Now, I know that's a lot said about this subject, but it's very, very important, my friend, that if we're going to know we're saved by the grace of God, and we're going to have the attributes of salvation upon us, and we can have the assurance of salvation, we're going to love our neighbor. Uh, we're going to love our brothers in Christ. We're going to love our neighbor, even though he may not be saved enough to share Christ with him, aren't we? And that is a sure uh, assurance that uh, we know the Lord. So that's what John is talking about here. I know that was lengthy, but that's the point that we certainly wanted to make. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. And it goes on with this, with this idea that we're talking about. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He's, he's not in the light of Christ. He's not confessing sin. He's not walking in the things as God would have us to love our brother uh, as we love ourselves, you see. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Verse 11, But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, that means to live your life in darkness, walking through this life in darkness, 
and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Have you ever seen people like that? They're so hateful and full of hate, but yet they think they're okay with God. And they're not. I mean, they're, they're simply not where God wants them to be. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. Who's the little children here? It's not the little kids, but, but the Christian people. He's talking to Christian people here. I have written to, to you, fathers, because you have known that he is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world. He changes gears here a little in verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away. Look, look at what things, look at what those things that people are so in love with in this world today. Stuff and entertainment and, and all of the things that, that drive our world today. Look in verse uh, uh, 17 what's going to happen. And the world passeth away. The things of the world are going to pass away. And the lust thereof, the desire for all of these things. But look at what it says. Praise the Lord. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What's the will of God? He accepts Christ and, and walks in his ways. Uh, because he desires to. Because he loves the Lord. But number one, he accepts the Lord by faith as his Lord and his Savior. And then he goes on, verse 18, Little children, it is, the last, uh, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, and then he goes on to say, Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Now, of course, this has been some 2,000 years ago that this has been written. And even in that day, uh, there were those, of course, that were against the things of God. We've seen that very clearly in our study of Acts and all of the books of the Bible. They were anti-Christ at that day. But in the last times, of course, uh, there's going to be those. And certainly in our day today, we see a building up against the things of Christ against those things that we know are truth. And we see that very, very clearly. And John is talking about this here way back yonder when this was written. Verse 19, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest or seen through clearly uh, that they were uh, not uh, all of us. So you see, they were, they came into the, to the churches. They, they were there. But my friend, well, you've heard me say this before, and probably every other preacher you've ever listened to. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, if you've been a member of, of a church. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized in every muddy river there is. Uh, the only thing that matters is what God sees inside your heart, and that is faith in Christ to forgive you and to cleanse you uh, from your unrighteousness, your sins, and to cover your sins. And that comes by simple childlike faith and receiving the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, and making him Lord of your life. And when he's Lord of your life, you will walk in light and you will walk in his ways by the desire of your heart. This is what John is trying to, to get across here. There are those that were with them in the church that were not of them. And, that, and unfortunately, that's the, it's that way and has been all the way down through the history of the church. There are those who, who showed uh, on the outside who they, they uh, wanted to be seen, but then on the inside they were not. And here we see that these people have stepped out and left them. We see the same thing today. Uh, it's not that moving to another church or something 
or, or just stepping out of the church makes you unsaved uh, as far as physically stepping out. But it's that the, the, the truth is that these people were never in the flock to begin with. It just looked like they were on the outside. And this is what John is talking about. Verse 20, but ye have an unction, an anointing, is what that means, from the Holy One, the Holy Spirit, and ye know all things. Discernment. We know the Christian brother and sister, don't we, by, by the Spirit that lives in us and our discerning spirit. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? Certainly that is a lie. Anyone that would deny the things of God that he's done through Jesus Christ, his son, is a liar. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. We've heard that many times. Jesus said it. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life, my friends. Even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received from him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. You've heard me say it many times after I do a sermon or a, a Bible study, and may even say it today, I guess I will. Now you go home and read that and allow God the Holy Spirit to teach you these things that we've talked about to teach you, but as the same anointing teaches, teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath, ta uh, hath taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear in the rapture, when he comes, we may have confidence. I've done that my very best to serve God and to please God and to walk in light and confess my sins and to have fellowship with him. You see, John's building all of this up to this point that we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Oh, my friends, that's a tough one, isn't it? I'd say everyone listening this morning can think of things that make us ashamed that we've come short of the glory of God in. But we go back to verse 2 of this chapter. We have, or verse 1, I'm sorry. But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus the righteous. Praise the Lord. And then verse 29. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. So what's this all saying in a nutshell today? It's saying if we desire in our heart the place that no one else can really see but us and God, but if we desire in our heart to serve God and we have this conviction, this, this I'm sorry, Lord, for doing that mentality here and in our heart, the heart of hearts, then we can be assured of our salvation. If we can go about in the world doing things that are contrary to the writings of God's Word and His teaching us how to live for Him and never have any remorse about that, any feeling of sadness or sorriness about it, then it would be time to check up on our relationship with Christ. It would be time to be as that publican in the temple that day to pound upon our chest and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's how the Lord wants us to come into him in that kind of fellowship. That way, we're confessed up, as a lot of old-time preachers say, we're prayed up and ready to go up and not be ashamed. That is a wonderful chapter in God's Word. It's a deep, deep chapter. We have not done it justice by our short time here together today. 
but maybe that gives you some insight on it. And again, you take it, read it, study it, ask God the Holy Spirit to teach you the truths in it, and he will. God bless you today until we speak again.